Today's summit is not business as usual, because this is a wartime summit. We are living through the gravest security crisis in Europe since World War II. Putin's war in Ukraine continues to kill women and children and destroy entire cities. And this is a blatant violation of international law. The European Union's top priority is to stop the war as soon as possible and to protect the Ukrainian people. In times of crisis, dialogue is needed more than ever. That's why we focused on what can be done to end this war as soon as possible. The EU and China, we agreed that this war is threatening global security and the world's economy. This global instability is not in China's interest and not in the EU's interest. We share a responsibility as global actors to work for peace and stability. We called on China to help end the war in Ukraine. China cannot turn a blind eye to Russia's violation of international law, and these principles are enshrined in the UN Charter and principled sacred to China. The EU, together with our international partners, we have imposed heavy sanctions on Russia. And our goal is to put pressure on the Kremlin and to end the war. These sanctions have also a price for us in Europe, but this is a price to defend freedom and democracy. Any attempts to circumvent sanctions or provide aid to Russia would prolong the war. This would lead to more loss of life and greater economic impact. This is not in anyone's long-term interest. We will also remain vigilant on any attempts to aid Russia financially or militarily. However, positive steps by China to help end the war would be welcomed by all Europeans and by the global community. We also discussed areas of shared interest where we cooperate, like global health, we want to engage with China and all members of the WHO on a new agreement on pandemic prevention, preparedness and response. We are also cooperating with China to protect our planet and we can and we must do more. We must be ready for COP27 in Egypt later this year. And we also called on China to further increase its ambition on environment, biodiversity and climate action. We also discussed areas where we disagree. We raised our concerns about China's treatment of minorities in Xinjiang and Inner Mongolia and of the people of Tibet. And this includes the crackdown on human rights defenders. We also expressed our regret at the dismantling of the one country to systems in Hong Kong. And we insisted a lot on the relaunch of the human rights dialogue and Prime Minister Li Keqiang confirmed that this would take place, the relaunch of the human rights dialogue. We also raised individual human rights cases. We also discussed our trade and economic relationship with China to make it fairer, to ensure reciprocity, to achieve a level playing field, to rebalance our bilateral trade and investment relations. We also raised the issue of China's discriminatory trade practices against Lithuania and the effects for the integrity of the single market. We also touched on a number of international issues. Taiwan, of course, the importance of preserving stability and the status quo in the Taiwan Strait, the challenges in Afghanistan, but also the situation in Myanmar and the Korean Peninsula. En conclusion, so to conclude, we had the opportunity to have these discussions with the Chinese authorities in this uh, exceptional context. It's a very serious situation. Of course, this war has been triggered by Russia and Ukraine. It's a tragedy for Ukraine. It's a clear attack on the international rules-based order and international law in general. We had the chance to explain the EU's position 
to call on China to act, to commit to acting and to commit to participating actively in all efforts which are being made to restore peace and stability.